you like to talk to tomatoes, if a squash can make you smile, if you like to waltz with potatoes up and down the produce aisle. Have we got a show for you. the cucumber and you're listening to Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. This is Petunia Rhubarb reporting from Bumbleberg Park where preparations are underway for the city's gala tricentennial celebration. But as the city gets ready to celebrate its 300th birthday, something very odd has been discovered which has authorities concerned. The statue of Bumbleberg's founder, Obadiah Bumbley, has been mysteriously wrapped in what appears to be a giant spider web. And one such concerned authority would be none other than the mayor of Bumbleberg herself, Mayor Blueberry. Oh, hello. I was not expecting you. Mayor Blueberry, do you expect this recent vandalism to have an impact on the upcoming celebration? Evans, no. Everything is organized and well under control. I'm not letting a few silly cobwebs get in the way of our 300th birthday. Well under control, indeed. Once I'm finished with them, I'll be the one in control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Curly, you've returned. Come, tell me what you've learned. Yeah, I love this World Wide Web thing you got going. Very high tech. Oh, for the moment, it's only my Bumbleberg wide web. But be patient. First Bumbleberg, then the world. So, well, uh, what you got? Paralyzer beams, magnetic webbing, an army of little radioactive robot spiders? Silly one, that's not the way I operate. I'm temptation. I'll simply divide and conquer. No one can stand up to me on their own. Oh, yeah, right. Very smooth. Tell me then, what have you scouted out for me? Who's in charge? Which pillars need removal? Every town needs three key elements to operate. One, organization. You got Mayor Blueberry, the city's duly elected leader. She runs the city, keeps everything moving like a well-oiled machine. And her weakness? Vanity. She wants to be beautiful. Perfect. Two, communication. Meet Petunia Rhubarb, television news reporter. Bumblebag looks to her to find out what's going on. <laughs> well, I've got news for her. What's her secret weakness? Video games. She's good at them, too. And she'd be happy to play them all day long. Excellent. I think I might be able to arrange something. Three, protection. And that comes courtesy of Larry Boy. Superhero. There's nothing there. Actually, I'm still kind of working on that one, boss. <laughs> well, then kind of work a little harder. I need to know about their defender if we want to take him out. Meanwhile, I believe I'll pay a visit to her honor the mayor. Knock, knock. Who's there? Just a pretty little apple with some time to spare. Open up. Apple who? A harmless little cutie with her eye on you. Open up that door and let me in. Don't you worry about those hairs on your chinny chin chin. I'm not preaching moderation. Knock, knock. What's your name? Temptation. 
I'm extremely busy. I said, who let you in? I was hoping you would. Look, I'm very busy right now. I've got a million things to organize for the celebration. Why, that's exactly why I'm here. With everything you have to worry about, I thought you might need a little help with your outfit for the occasion. I'm a seamstress, you might say. What a fabulous cape. Look at those eyes and that lovely purple-blue complexion. With a little work, you could be a knockout. For sure, please. I'm not one of those vain blueberries who only thinks of our appearance. <laughs> a knockout? <laughs> Do you really think? Absolutely. Please come in. And you know, there's no harm in wanting to look your best. After all, you represent all of Bumbleburg. You owe it to your citizens to appear fabulous at all times. What a marvelous dress. I love the color. Is that crimson? It's more of a scarlet. <laughs> knock, knock. What's your name? Temptation. Oh no! Temptation! Look out! Temptation! Hold on, Jerry! I'll be right with you! Okay, let's do some reporting. Oh, uh, can I help you? I hope so. Sometimes it's just so hard to help yourself. Huh? I have something you might be interested in. I'm sorry, but I'm on a deadline. Huge breaking story, Trison- Oh, bless your heart, you are the busy one. Don't you ever relax? Well, yeah. I play my handy pod. What if I told you I have the one and only test version of Handy Pod Advanced? Handy Pod Advanced? Maybe I could come in and give you a demonstration? I don't know. I need to find out what's going on with the statue and who's responsible and... With Laser Cycle 4000. Laser Cycle 4000? Come on in. I'd love to. Oh, this is advanced. It looks like you can walk right in. Oh, but you can. Go ahead. Walk right in. Have fun. No news is good news. Oh, Uncle Ephraim, you'd be so proud. Now the only force standing between me and my conquest of Bumbleburg is Larry Boy. Not to worry, boss. I got the goods on him and that brainy butler of his. Two oids, bananas and chocolate. Mmm, delicious. Exceedingly interesting. What? What? Apparently, these mysterious webs are nothing new. It seems they've plagued the city of Bumbleburg in the past. When? How? Why? Unfortunately, my computer database doesn't contain such old information. I believe I'll have to make a trip to the Bumbleburg Historical Society to find out more. Oh no! I've got to move fast. I'll be back shortly, Master Larry. Uh, meanwhile, I trust you won't give in to your <clears throat> temptation while I'm gone. Don't worry, Alfred. I'm stronger than temptation. I'm a superhero. Ah! Ah! Who is it? Uh, hello? Uh, Alfred said someone named Larry Boy might need some assistance? Well, you can tell Alfred that Larry Boy's a superhero and he doesn't need any help. Oh, oh, I see. Well, let me leave my card with you, just in case. Now, where did I put those? Maybe it's under the chocolate. Did you say chocolate? Yeah, right here under the chocolate. Well, I guess it won't hurt to have the opinion of another trainer. Uh, oh, wait. You need security clearance. Oh, well, I, um... Promise not to tell anybody about my secret cave? Cross my heart. All clear. Come on in. I'll be right up. I mean, Larry Boy will be right up. I thought you'd never ask. Ah! 
Nearly 300 years ago, a small band of valiant vegetables would embark on a ship they called the Cauliflower to settle an unknown land. Led by the fearless Obadiah Bumbly, they soon began establishing a primitive settlement in the wilderness of the New World. Today, we give thanks for our safe arrival on these beautiful and bountiful shores. Obadiah Bumbly. But it wasn't long before it became clear that something was rotten in the new settlement. Dearest Catherine, I am finding myself irresistibly drawn to a fascinating new establishment in town. It is called Appley's Funhouse. And boy, does it look like fun! <laughs> Abraham Roberts. Soon, chaos would reign in their little community. The cause of all this chaos was Ephraim Appley, a bad apple who had come over on the cauliflower determined to take over the tiny town by distracting them with play. His plan was to enslave the community with non-stop fun. It was only the timely arrival of Obadiah Bumbly that saved the little community from ruin. Ephraim Appley, thou art a scourge upon the fair face of Bumblybird. Obadiah Bumbly. Oh, brother Obadiah, thou art so uptight. Prither, let the brethren play at the little checkers. Ephraim Appley. I have not against a bit of harmless amusement, brother Ephraim. It is well and good to play as thou checkers on occasion. Citizens of Bumblyburg, I beseech ye, let us turn our backs on this rotten apple and his house of overindulgence. Thou hast tried to lead us into temptation, Brother Ephraim, but we shall not follow thee. Obadiah Bumbly. Oh, yeah? Says who? Say we. Oh, okay. yeah. Please, yeah. be gone. Be gone, gone. Ephraim Please. 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 And thus, Ephraim Apley and his lineage would be forced from Bumbleburg, defeated in his plot to rule the little village. Oh my, that apple! <laughs> Master Laddie? Oh, what's happened to you? Oh no! You've fallen into a web of chocolate temptation! Now, isn't that an awful shame? You! You're Appley! How did you get in here? Why, your superhero friend let me in, of course. Well, if he'd known what I know, he certainly never would have. And that's what they all say. But they always let me in. <laughs> I know all about you. <laughs> and of course, I know all about you too, Alfred. What? What are you doing? Alfred, poor Alfred. You've been working so hard doing all that tedious research in the library. Don't you think you deserve a little harmless amusement? Good evening, and welcome once again to my Bananarama extravaganza. Oh. Oh, oh, no, you don't. I'm not it's gonna fall. Whoopsie, <laughs> <laughs> That gets me every time. Yes, the banana is a comic genius. And of course, only the smartest, most tasteful people can appreciate his work. Indeed, ma'am. I've often harbored that very thought myself. <laughs> Ta ta, boys. I've got a big surprise for Bumblebird. Now, great Uncle Ephraim, our time has come. Soon I'll control this town with that silly superhero and his butler out of the way. We need to move fast. And now to launch the final phase of my brilliant scheme. Bumbly Bird will be ours. Uh, yours, yours, I mean. Everyone will be in your power. <laughs> That's better. Wait till they see what I've got in store for them. I'll spin a monument to temptation so alluring that no citizen of Bumbleburg will be able to resist. All will enter, but none will ever come out. Step right up, come one, come all. You don't want to miss out on this fun and exciting opportunity. And whoopsie doozy, <laughs> I slipped on the old peel. Hurry, folks, come on down to Appley's Funhouse 2. That's right, Appley's Funhouse 2. Uh, Master Larry, you must listen. Bumbleberg is in terrible danger. They are being led into temptation. Mmm, chocolate. Larry boy! Bumbleberg needs a hero! Hero? I am that. I am that hero! Uh, 
Oh, oh no! I've fallen into a web of chocolate temptation! Alfred, I can't get out of this mess by myself. I need your help. As do I, Master Letty. Throw me a line. I'll try. Oh, what do you know? The potassium phosphate in the sports elixir must have had an adverse chemical reaction with the triglyceride compound in this web, thus working like an acid. Interesting. Oh. I'm terribly sorry, Master Larry. I haven't been the butler you need me to be. No need to apologize, Alfred. I completely understand. But I need your help. It seems we need each other's help to get out of temptation. I don't know what happened. I just thought I'd eat a little bit of chocolate. Uh, Master Larry, you cannot be the superhero God wants you to be if... If all I ever think about is chocolate. I, I know that now, Alfred. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thanks for your help, buddy. And thank you for yours. But others are still in the grip of temptation. We must help free them or Bumblyberg will be doomed. <laughs> led into temptation by that bad apple. That lovely apple? I'm afraid her beauty is only skin deep. She needs help. <laughs> Master Letty! You can't be the mayor God wants you to be if all you think about is how you look. That is true. Bumbleberg is in trouble. Oh my goodness. Please, can you help me get out of here? You bet I can. my friends. Our pleasure, Your Honor. Now we need to free Petunia. The city needs to learn the news. Ladies and gentlemen, Bumbleberg is of all ages. The fabulous Apley's Funhouse 2 is open for business. Come on in and join the fun and the variety. We got the music. Whoever enters the Funhouse stays in the Funhouse. Apley's Funhouse 2, the round the clock funnest place in I didn't see anything about this on the news. Come to think of it, I haven't seen anything on the news. Petunia! I don't think I can hold it off much longer! I'm on the way! Help me! How do I get out of here? There's nothing wrong with playing video games, but... You've let this video game play you! I know! I want out! Hold on! Let's find out what's going on out there! Come on, folks! Hurry, hurry, hurry! It's all happening on the inside! Nothing going on out here! Hey! Who's that little worm? Apprehend him, Master Larry! He's working for the apple! Mm. Officer! Arrest! This worm. What's the charge? Accomplice to temptation with intent to lead us astray. Operating a giant Macintosh without a permit. What? You can't arrest me. And resisting arrest. Petunia, do your thing. You got it. Okay. On me in three, two... Petunia Rhubarb coming to you live from Bumbleberg Park. A huge, monstrous apple has been sighted here in the park. Authorities are cautioning the public not. I repeat, do not go near Apley's Funhouse. Turn away from temptation. It's a trap. Believe me, I know. Repeat, flee temptation. What's happening? What are they doing? All right, bad apple. The jig is up. You are rotten to the core. Go! I've got one shot to plug that web shooter. Uh, sorry. Whoa! Whoa! Master Letty, what are you doing? You've got to take down the giant apple. No problem, Alfred. I'm just working on a plan. You should use oomph. But I am giving it everything I got. Oh, right. Attention, no! everyone. I need help from all the municipal departments. Quickly, position yourselves on each of the web connections. Larry Boy needs our help. All citizens are clear of the funhouse. All right, everyone. Square! So, with 
the help of the municipal departments, they take down the giant apple's funhouse of temptation and save the town. The people are clear of the web of temptation. How about that party? My fellow citizens, we are gathered here today to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the founding of our great city of Bumblebird. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, I proudly present to you our founding father, Obadiah Bumbly. Now we also have someone else to thank for delivering our town from this terrible evil. And that, of course, is our city's great superhero, Larry Boy. Why, thank you, dear, but I can't take the credit. Temptation is too strong for any one of us to handle alone. We need God's help and the help of the people around us, our friends and our family. Well put, Master Larry. Welcome to the Ballad of Little Joe. I'm Larry the Cucumber. A long, long time ago, way out in the West somewhere. That's right, the West. There lived a group of brothers. Cowboy brothers. Uh, right, uh, cowboy brothers. Hello, little doggies. With French accents. What? It's a French Western. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, there was Reuben, oh, Simeon, Bonjour. Levi, Adi, Izzy, Yahoo. Zeb, Bravo. Gad, Esa. Ash, Yahoo. Dan, Emado. Natty, Et toi. Oh, and Jude. Hey, Jude! Hey. Uh, then there was uh, Baby Ben, but he was too little to come outside. <laughs> oh, and one more. Little Joe. Look who finally decided to get up. Hey guys, where do you hear about the crazy dream I had last night? Quiet, Little Joe, we are working here. Come and get it! <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast, fellas. Before we eat, I have a special announcement. I think we all know that today is Little Joe's birthday. Papa. Baked it myself. All together. Yippee ki yay ki yay! Today is a special day. Yippee ki yay ki yay! Today we celebrate you. <laughs> little Joe, Little Joe, take a bow. Look, they made the frosting cow. Little Joe, Little Joe, give it the rest. We all know Pa likes you the best. Yippee ki yay ki yay! Aw, you shouldn't have. Finally, we agree on something. <gasps> For me? Little Joe is wearing a vest made from the finest calf hides. Perfect for riding the range or going to courting. This is one vest that says, look at me, I'm something special. And what do mittens say? They say, you are not as special as your brother. <sighs> and for my birthday wish, I want to tell you all about my latest dream. It was the strangest thing. Past the mountains in the fields where the cowboys practice. Out beneath the desert sky stood a dozen cactus. C -c cactuses? C Cacti? Cacti? Continue. Those were you gathered round the other. They bowed, you see, to the one that was me, their dearest little brother. Their dearest little brother. Crazy, huh? What are you saying? That you will rule over us? 
Like a king? <laughs> it was just a dream, right? It's not really gonna happen. <laughs> uh, maybe you should cut down on the bratwurst before bed, huh? Needless to say, Joseph's dreams didn't make his brothers like him any better. Hey, why are we at this whole abandoned mine shaft? Uh, this is where we hid your birthday present. Wow, very, uh, creative. It's time to get what you've got coming to you. Oh, I can't wait. I don't see a birthday present. You are not looking hard enough. Okay. No, I still don't see anything. Well then, how about now? Whoa! Uh, guys? A goat must have bumped me or something. Little help? We left you, but we're too busy bowing down before you. <laughs> hey, guys, this isn't funny. Really? It made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who's that? What are you guys doing? Come on, joke's over. Ha ha, real funny. Guys? Guys? Tie this around your middle. Who, who are you? Never you mind. Just tie the rope! Well, finally! Oh dear. Hey, Desperados! You better come to your senses! <laughs> Joe didn't know where he was, or where he was going. He'd never been away from the ranch before, and now here he was, on the run with dangerous men. Ah, uh, Mr. Desperado, did you put out the campfire last night? Here you go, boss. Oh, and uh, by the way, the peanuts make him thirsty, so get ready to sell a lot of root beer. Oh, you're a natural, my lad. And that's why you've earned this. I wasn't sure if you'd work out when I bought you from those desperados. But congratulations, my lad. Employee of the month? Oh, thank you, Mr. McPotifer. I won't let you down, you'll see. From now on, I'll work harder than ever. C'est Joseph. Oh, hello, kitty. That's Miss Kitty to you. Whatever you say. Look, little Joe, don't be a sap. No one's looking. Take this money and get out of here. Why would I do that? You and I both know you don't want to be here. With this much cash, you can get back home. I'm sorry, Miss Kitty, but stealing is wrong. If I took that money, I'd be disobeying God. Not to mention I'd probably lose my status as employee of the month. Good day, Miss Kitty. Uh, to show you there's no hard feelings about you-know-what, I made some alterations to your costume for you. Oh, well, that's really kind of you, but I wasn't aware that it was... It's a tad heavier than before! I put some extra stuffing in it. Thief! <gasps> there's a thief among us! All right! What seems to be the trouble here? This man has been stealing from dear old McPotifar since the day he arrived here. Little Joe? This does not look good. <gasps> Joe, me lad! How could you? What do you have to say for yourself? I'm innocent? Tell it to the judge! <laughs> Miss Kitty up and sent me off to jail And though I haven't done a thing I'm stuck here without bail But my belief that God is good Helps overcome frustration So I'll keep doing what is right Despite incarceration <laughs> I gotta hand it to you You've got the best attitude of any prisoner I've ever had God is good, Sheriff Bob So what have I gotta be down about? Well... 
if God is really good, why is all this stuff happening to you? I don't know that yet, but I will. When it's time, I just need to keep doing what's right. <sighs> all right, men, lights out. Another day of quilting tomorrow. <laughs> And that's when I woke up screaming. Well, what does my dream mean, Joe? Uh, mine too. What do they mean? Well, there's good news and there's bad news. You're going back to work today. But you're being sent up the river. Congratulations. So sorry. Uh, anyone here? Oh, yes, dear Baker, I have wonderful news. The mayor has given you a full pardon. He wants you to resume your duties immediately. And I'm extending an invitation to you, Mr. Blacksmith, to join my chain gang up the river. <laughs> How do you do that? Hmm? Oh, well, I've always just had this thing for dreams. Just another way God made me special. Uh, yeah, and he loves you very much, uh, I've heard. Little Joe really believed God loved him. Still, every now and then, he'd wonder what God was up to. Hey, God, Little Joe here. Not to complain or anything, but what's going on? I tell people what their dreams mean, and they always come true. But you gave me a dream a long time ago, and I'm in jail, and I didn't even do anything. I'm trying to do what's right, but I'm a little confused. Well, please be with Pa and baby Benjamin and most of my brothers. Okay, and Jude too. Good night, God. The very next day, who should show up but the mayor himself? My baker tells me you can interpret dreams. No, I can't, sir. What? I can't interpret your dreams, but God can. He'll give me the answer you're looking for. Right. Well, he better, or I'll put you back in that jail and you'll never get out. Let's get started. Earlier today, I had the strangest dream. Seven cows sat on a hill, so big and fat, I got my grill. I was thinking about a barbecue. Then seven scrawny ones came along and gulped the big fat cows were gone. And then I dreamt I was in front of a large group of people in my underwear. What's that about? So come on, start interpreting. Well, it's really quite simple. The seven fat cows mean seven years of plenty are a-coming. More food than you can imagine. And the seven skinny cows mean seven years of terrible famine. Famine so bad, the good years will be all but forgotten. If this is true, what do we do? Well, during the good years, you should store away as much food as possible to give back to the people during the seven bad years. And Dodgeball City will be saved. Of course, you'll need someone with great organizational abilities to make sure it all works. Archie, what's the state of your sock drawer? Ah, uh, a little disorganized, I'm afraid. That's what I thought. Cucumber, you're in charge. Excuse me? Well, what are you doing standing around here? You've got a city to save! <laughs> <laughs> So the mayor made Little Joe the most powerful man in Dodgeball City. Uh, after him, of course. And just like always, Little Joe got right to it, doing things right and making stuff work. Little Joe, oh Little Joe.
that soil for years. You did it, little Joe. You saved the town. Yeah. Oh, what is it, little Joe? What's wrong? Well, sir, I've got a family out there somewhere. I just hope they're all right. Oh, I'd be surprised if this drought was that widespread. I'm sure they're right as rain. After all these years, Little Joe is still concerned about his family. I know he must miss them a lot. Well, back home, his brothers and Pa are experiencing the famine as well. But they didn't prepare like Little Joe did, so the brothers decide to go to Dodgeball City to find food. When they get there, they have to see Little Joe to get permission to buy the food. But they don't recognize him. Little Joe certainly recognizes them, but he decides to disguise his voice and not tell them who he is. He has a plan to see if they've changed. Let's hear what happens next. Howdy, strangers. I run this here town. What can I do you for? We hear tell you've got yourself some food stored up. So, we reckon we'd come on down to see if we could buy some from you. Hmm. How many in your family? Just the 11 of us now. One of our brothers got ate up in a wild gopher accident, but that was years ago. Mighty sorry to hear that. We have regretted it every day since. He was my closest brother, and I barely even remember him. Where's your... <clears throat> Where's your pa? He could not make the trip. His heart is broken. <laughs> You'll see the sheriff. He'll take care of you. Give him whatever they need, but don't let him go till I say so. Are you okay, little Joe? I'm fine, but whatever you do, don't use my name around him. Whatever you say. <sighs> know if my brothers have changed. I need a test. You strangers ready to go? I reckon so. Your man gave us everything we need. We tried to pay, but he would not hear of it. Now I wonder why he wouldn't take money from a bunch of low down dirty thieves. Pardon? You heard me. You all came a long way just to get caught robbing me. Now see here, we are not thieves. We came to buy some food. But if this is a problem, I... Them ain't pepperonis, partner. There's been a mistake. You bet there's been a mistake. Your brother tried to steal from me. And we don't take kindly to stealing around these here parts. But you don't understand. My pa has already lost one boy, a boy he loved very much. And it was my fault. I cannot let him lose Benjamin too. Keep me prisoner and let my brother go free. No! no, 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 no all right, all right. Everybody get out of there. Little Joe, we got a problem. Little Joe? So, you'd really sacrifice yourselves for your brother? Me, me, yes, but the brother It's time to tell you who I really am. Brothers, it's me! <gasps> Little Joe! Oh, you are not still upset about that little mineshaft joke, are you? Little Joe? I am to blame for what happened to you. Punish me, but I beg of you, let my brothers go. Hey Jude, what you did was wrong, and it hurt me very much. But what you intended for harm, God used for good, to save you all, to save everyone, to save Pa. How could I not forgive you? You boys forgot your mittens! <gasps> Little Joe? <gasps> pa! My boy! <laughs> and that's the story of how a very bad thing became a very good thing and led to the happiest family reunion the West had ever seen. Yeah! <laughs> I'm 
Jerry the Cucumber, and you're listening to the story of Lyle the Kindly Viking. Once upon a time, there was a little village by the sea where there dwelt a band of Vikings. Good morning, Mabel. How are you, dear? Oh, just fine and dandy. Is Harold round here? I haven't seen him, but that's no surprise. Olaf's gone too? Mm-hmm. They're out with the guys. We should have listened to our mothers and married more judiciously. But we pick men with metal hats who sail across the sea. Live and learn. We married Vikings. What are you know? The terrors of the sea. They're Vikings. Wherever they go, pillaging happily. They're Vikings. Let there be no ambiguities. Cause this is my life as a Viking one. We have to admit it is right with strife. But that's the lot we got when married we. The terrors of the sea. Oh, look what the cat drug in. Wonder what they brought back this time. Uh, there's your wife, Olaf. Mm, yep. And there's your wife, Harold. Oh, boy. Do they love us or what? Well, what's not to love? I mean, after all, we're Vikings. What do you know? The terrors of the sea. We're Vikings. Wherever we go, pillaging happily. We're Vikings. Let there be no ambiguity. Vikings, cause who doesn't like a pile of loot? Some gold and jewels and a shiny suit. And a giant screen TV to boot. A Viking life for me. Yo ho. That's the life for me. So that was the life of a Viking. Pillaging and plundering. Uh, those are fancy words for, well, for taking other people's things. They were stealing. Their boats were so fast that no one could catch them, so they could get away with it. But not all the Vikings were involved in this unfortunate practice. Uh, no, uh, there was one in particular. His name was Lyle. Good morning, Lyle. Good morning. You missed another raid, Lyle. I know. I was making stuff. Lyle never went on the raids. Instead, he'd stay home and make crafts. Uh, uh pot holders, to be exact. What you got in the bag, Lyle? Pot holders. You want one? Oh, you gave me one last week, but thank you. Here's your share of the loot, Lyle. Uh, don't worry, it's the least we could give you. Thanks. Now, Lyle was definitely an unusual Viking. Whenever the other Vikings returned from a raid, he would take his small bag of loot, plus a bunch of pot holders, and head out to sea on his own expedition. Hi, Sven. Hi, Otar. As you can imagine, this puzzled the other Vikings quite a bit. What's up with Lyle? What's up with Lyle? I'm telling you that boy doesn't fit the Viking style. Since 793, our strategy's been clear. Go get stuff from over there and bring it over here. He's got me feeling all contempty. He takes his boat out loaded up and brings it back in empty. What? What? What is up with Lyle? Yes, uh, well, uh, no one could figure out what Lyle was up to. So two of the other Vikings, uh, two fellows named Sven and Otar, decided to follow him and find out. So very stealthily, they followed Lyle across the sea. 
No, you're too close. He's gonna see us. No, 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 Sven, no. Sven, I'm not close enough. Would you just let me? We're gonna lose them. I'm just trying to grab. Closer. I... No, no, too close. I no, knew... no. Would you just? And much to their surprise, he led them right back to the monastery they had raided the night before. Dear monks, dear monks, what can I say? My friends have taken your things away. Dear monks, dear monks, what can I do? I've come to bring some back to you. I cannot make it all come back, for they are bigger and older. But I'll share what I have in my little sack and a few of my own potholders. Hey, it's the thought that counts. Dear little Viking boy. You can call me Lyle. Oh, okay. <clears throat> dear Lyle, dear Lyle, we like your style. For we were all despairing. But you rode your boat for many a mile to practice an act of sharing. Boys? Sven and Otar were very confused. I'm confused. They returned home and waited to confront Lyle. Not so fast. Don't take another hop. We know where you've been and we think it's gotta stop. Huh? We Vikings rule the seas. We pillage and attack. We never say please, and we never give stuff back. Not to mention the potholders. You both care about your share of gold, so rare, and big TVs. But when I share, I get my share of friends. Do -do 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 What's the use a golden goose is no excuse for being mean when I share I get my share of friends do 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 Yeah Well Sven and Otar had never thought about it that way. Could sharing actually give them more of what would make them really happy? Even they had noticed that watching that big screen TV wasn't all that fun by yourself. They needed to give that a little more thought. In the meantime, though, they knew Lyle would be in big trouble if Olaf learned what he was doing. If Olaf finds out... You know. Well, Olaf's not gonna find out. This will be our little secret. Thanks, guys. So they resolved not to let Olaf find out. Unfortunately, this was easier said than done. Just a few days later, as the Vikings were headed out to raid the monastery once again, it was the only monastery in the area, Otar spotted something. Oh, no. What is it? It's Lyle. He's at the monastery. <gasps> If Olaf sees him, he's in big trouble! What do we do? We've got to distract Olaf! Look, Olaf, there's a fish with a pretty yellow circle at the bottom of the backside of his fin. Look, Olaf, there's another and another and another! And that little one has got a funny grin. Oh, I don't Look, see Olaf, 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 way down underneath the water. It's the biggest fish I think I've ever seen. Look, Olaf, he's got purple spots and orange and yellow markings and a dorsal fin that's iridescent green. What? Otar, I don't see any of that. Sven, we've got to distract him. Help me out. Oh. Look, Olaf, there's a turtle and he's wearing pink pajamas and he's got a cowboy hat upon his lid. Look, Olaf, very close and see he's riding on a llama and he's chasing down the herd of giant squid. Look, Olaf, 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 there's a whale that's dancing with a bear. Look, Olaf, it's a mermaid. It's an ostrich. It's a bunny. Look, Olaf, please look anywhere but... Ah, 
don't see anything. What? But there. Hey, isn't that Lyle? Mm-hmm. And he left something with those monks. What is it? It's potholders and the little bag of loot we gave him. <gasps> hey, that goes against the code of the Viking. You can say that again. Why, that little Viking is in big trouble. What do you think you're doing? I was... Giving them stuff back. Um, yeah? Well, now there's a storm of brewing, and you're the one that's under attack. Uh, Lawless, uh, this storm is blowing up pretty quick. Uh, maybe we should head back. First, I need to make an example out of this ex Viking. You know, I think Harold is right. We gotta get out. Here. Almost done. You'll see that nothing good comes from giving things back. Somebody to save us, too. Thanks, guys. We knew we could help you someday. But what about my friends? Ah, uh, uh, they were mean to us. I'm pretty sure God wants us to help everyone, not just the people who are nice to us. Oh, you're right. We're monks. We should know that, huh? All right, come on, boys. Let's save the Vikings. Ah, uh, can we put away the good silverware first? Oh, all right. So not only did the monks save Lyle, they saved all the Vikings from the storm. And just because Lyle had made friends with them by sharing. Thank you, thank you, our new friends. You saved us from the sea. Our share of gold, so rare, and big TVs. But when we share, we get our share of friends. So what's the use? A golden goose is no excuse for being mean. When we share, we get a share of friends. Does that mean we can't be Vikings anymore? Not necessarily, but I do think you need to change your song. We're Vikings, what do you know? The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings, wherever we go, sharing happily. We're Vikings, let there be no animosities. Cause our pillaging ways we build them in by sharing and caring and making friends. And finally our singing is at its end. The sharers of the sea. We're Vikings, the sharers of the sea. I need to go to the bathroom. Ah, uh, Sven, you can stop singing now. Oh. Right.